Yeah. Hour two of the beer show here on 1500 ESPN. It's Reavers. It's Mike Fratelloni with Fratelloni's Ace Hardware and Guard Store. And hey, look, it's Tom from Elevated Beer One and Spirits. I thought you were done, but you are back. Rising from the ashes. How are you, buddy? <laughs> Uh, we mentioned the weekly uh, during the weekly beer run in the first hour uh, about the tasting on Saturday from 3 to 5 p.m., but you brought another special guest in with you today. Yes. If you think back, back, back into the summer months, we uh, we did a segment. Yeah, during the State, State Fair. Fair. State Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. God, the State Fair is fun. You even got me to show up at your store afterwards. That's how compelling of a segment it was. I even drew myself into your store. Uh, (laughs) And we did something really interesting. Um... Uh, based off that show and this collaboration uh, with Chip Walton here uh, from Chop and Brew, um, it's a homebrew uh, slash cooking uh, blog show video show. web web cast vidcast. There's a lot of uh, Tom, newfangled. Tom, I love you. Stop talking. Okay, <laughs> Chip, Chip from hey, Chop and Brew going on? is here. Howdy. <laughs> and he's up to the microphone right now. Now Tom's mad at me. Uh, thanks for coming back on the beer show again, man. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't want Tom to butcher the introduction anymore, yeah. so I thought I would just so help him So Chip off. started life as a uh, <laughs> a lower tier student, we'll call it. Um <laughs> He really likes sunflower seeds. No, I'm kidding. No, I think he's trying to say we did the live show at the State Fair, and then the Saturday afterwards, uh, we kind of crowdsourced this recipe. That's right, yes. We brewed it in the parking lot of Elevated. They set us up with a pimp tight tent, and it was really good. We had, I'd say, 20, 30 people throughout the day stop by and kind of learn a little bit about the process. Well, and it's kind interesting. Of, yeah, yeah, it really is. What did you make? What we were? I was trying to remember. You crowdsourced everything, <laughs> right? Because yeah. they got to pick what Hoppy was using, everything. Yeah. Lesson did it number turn out? one, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> See, don't I said we had, we had that idea that we should crowdsource the name. You can crowdfund, but yeah. crowdsourcing, <laughs> okay. right. it's a but whole basic, different ball. Did the beer not turn out great, or was I, it? It did not, but I don't think it's necessarily <laughs> at a fault of the crowdsource recipe. Even there, this thing was kind of destined to fail, and I don't want people to think that homebrew is it's like hard, that. Yeah. I realize I'm I'm promoting this show about mm-hmm. homebrewing, mm-hmm. and I'm going to tell you about the worst beer. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it was a we boiled it down to calling it a pale rye mild. It ended up being kind of like an American grain bill with American hops. Kind of some English influence, but this English yeast, I think, kind of didn't let the American hop shine. It okay. turned out kind of muddled and minerally. I'm going to rebrew it, though. There was a lot of things after the actual brew. It's weird. Imagine, like, working, being a woodworker and saying, hey, I'm going to go to a parking lot and take my entire wood shop out sure, to this parking right, lot. Right. Then you're like, where's my drill bits? And yeah. So going and brewing in a foreign place is kind of weird. It was really warm. We couldn't get the wort cool enough for the yeast to be extremely happy. So it was kind of... I'm glad that people came out and saw the process more than anything because it will turn out generally, but in this case, some things back at the house were kind of working against mm-hmm. it as well. But All we're right. going to rebrew it. That's the point in a more comfortable and controlled setting. Controlled environment. Yes. All right. So first of all, let's start, at the, let's start with the basics. Uh, what is Chop and Brew? Chop and Brew is a webcast about home brewing and cooking at home. For the most part, it's much more about home brewing. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, you're riding along for brew days or maybe you're hearing from some of the really wise and award-winning home brewers of the Twin Cities region or we travel. There's been some episodes from Pittsburgh, Austin, Texas. But it's kind of more of a celebration of the culture of home brewing. It's not so much nuts and bolts, one, two, three, instructional, even though that kind of creeps out mm-hmm. through the entertaining side. So it's a 10 to 30 minute webcast, depending on what the topic is or how crazy we're going. And you have a big background uh, in beer, uh, obviously, given that you uh, also work for Summit. Right. And my day job, (laughs) when I'm not ruining beers in parking lots, (laughs) what I like to do is leave it up to the pros. And um, yeah, I do social media and video blogs, digital marketing for Summit Brewing Company in town. So it's kind of like between getting really good beer at work and knowing a bunch of really good home brewers on the show, mm-hmm. I can kind of be that guy that's like, I'm going to a parking lot. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I'm going to ferment in a 95 degree garage and we'll see what happens. Right, so, right, right. Um, kind of wacky like that. Um, but yeah, we're actually going to start hopefully a homebrew club here at Summit in the new year. And the point of that will be to kind of be the testing ground the R&D before the R&D for potential new... You'll be the olive branch, basically. Yeah, some That's grains and some idea. hops yeah. that no one else can get. Our head brewer and brew crew are going to let us kind of 
get familiar with them so they can taste, oh, okay, in a very basic well, form, it, this is what becomes the next beer possibly. And because Summit has been around and so successful for so long, you know, we kind of almost take them for granted. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, we do. Uh, <laughs> even though they're, they're they're here in St. Paul, they're a fantastic beer. Six yeah. years ago, that's yeah. what we were drinking exclusively because well, you had nothing else. And it's it's still it's Not, a great and beer. I didn't mean to that's say it like right. that. That's yeah. right. I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> no, but I mean from what 1987 or what what year? 1987. 86. 86, 86, yeah. 86. If you wanted to have a craft beer, you're drinking Summit. Period. Do you do you want to know how I know that the year is 86? Do you want to know why? How I know? Because I. The real, uh, first the, chest hair for the, you. No, the oh. only reason that <laughs> I did good in school and got good grades is I was fantastic at word association. And why I would always say, okay, uh, his name is Tom. He's got a top hat on. Okay. Things like that. Sure. 86. 86 was the year Top Gun came out. Oh. So I always think... Well, are you the Top Gun? Well, no, but it's because I was eight years old when that okay. movie came out. I'm like, okay, they came out the same year Top Gun did. That was 1986. Is that the same year you got your Tom Cruise hat, too? Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, sorry. That was a really odd history lesson. <laughs> but that's how I knew Summit's been around from 86. But yeah. you guys are constantly doing, at Summit, you're you're constantly evolving and trying new things. Yeah, we've got uh, you know the Unchained series, the Union series. We're going to put out a double IPA and 16-ounce cans in the spring, which has been something that people have been asking for for a while. Um, is this Summit's first time in a can? No. No, we've been in 12-ounce cans since last April. Okay, EPA, okay. Saga, I'm sorry, you're right. Seasonals. Um, got a couple other projects I guess I'm probably not able to talk about, but there is going to be a new year-round beer launching in April that'll have a couple other unique things Really? Uh, besides just being new. It'll be our first 16-ounce year-rounder. Nice. I think See, that's that, all I can it's, say it's about so it It's so hard because the they okay. can't make a mistake. What They're so big. You know, if you're a small brewery, you can throw something out on the market and have it not be great. But you shouldn't. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, but you could, right? And it doesn't really kill you. (laughs) Mark Stutrud would say no one should pay for your learning curve, and we dump beer. I mean, when we come up with a new beer, I guarantee you the first beer... The first run of this new beer in April will not be the you know the one that goes the final can. The demo and Mark will. You just can't. I don't think you can do that. But you. Yeah. I mean, your point is well taken. It's. It's grandiose. It's kind of like you got to get it right. You're going to hit a home run. Exactly. You can't. You're not. You're not just going to ask two buddies. Do you like it? Yeah. Oh, I think it's good. Let's let's go with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is you're going to have something more stringent. Well, and not only that. It's interesting. I was actually listening to Mark at at the the um, Minnesota Craft Brewers Guild. He was a speaker Mm -hmm. last night. Uh, We were at the Allied Trade Member Mixer thing, and he was talking about the fact that. Um, hop contracts are out to 2019. So Mm -hmm. you need to be thinking about which hops you are going to be using five years. Mm -hmm. Five years. Wow. And you need to be convinced and you need to develop those relationships. I don't want to put words into his mouth at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is me kind of just talking about this, but um, you need to be sold that you're going to be using this hop for this type of beer five years down the road. That everyone's because, palate's going to want right, that. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah, that's exactly. So, you know, with a company the size of Summit, and and I think what it really quickly that, you know, they've done so well is is is, is provide such a quality product. We talked at length about the quality control uh, and the lab for uh, quality uh, QA that they have um, there that you need to make sure that, you know, not only are you, you know, making that beer that people are going to like, but you're doing it the right way and, and making a quality product. All right. Let me to ask Chip, uh, you know, you, you said something, Tom, that, that sparked my interest. You know, hop contracts obviously are something that's in a high demand. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's safe yeah. to assume that right now. Why have we not seen, with the craft beer explosion, why have we not seen the hop farming explosion, especially in this market? Mm, I think, or I, have we? And I'm just oblivious. I, I think to it's it. just cracking open. You know, like southwestern Wisconsin is definitely maybe three or four years ahead. There's some small acreage down there, and they are hand feeding breweries like Ale Asylum and even smaller places um, in the area. You know, there's a community farm effort here uh, that just started. There's a buddy of mine that grows who directly go like sources and. Uh, Greenfield hops. He hooks up Pitchfork over outside of Hudson. So I think it's happening, but I think there's also parts of the country that are, they're having to do things within the climate and the Mm -hmm. the terroir to even make this possible. This area used to be ground zero 
for hops. And then it just, for one reason or another, blight and whatnot, Pacific Northwest just kind of came up. But let me ask you, so what uh, acreage wise, and it, it has to be cost effective in order for you to do something like yeah, this, but I, what would you need as, essentially? Is that part of the problem? I mean, I went out to Yakima, you know, as part of our hop sourcing and stuff in whenever that was September. And we're, I mean, those are thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of acreage. I can't remember the amount of poundage that comes off an acreage of a well mature mm -hmm. farm. We're talking possibly five years to 35 years, but. Yeah, it you know they grow tall, mm -hmm. so you can fit a lot. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know if you get the height, um, that's also part of the problem. I'd imagine here there's certain varieties that are going to be temperamental to our climate, just like the grapes that we grow here and everything else that Minnesota has apples and whatnot. So I think the key is going to be finding varieties that thrive and maybe not letting people, maybe not let the brewer dictate so much the source, but mm -hmm. experimenting with new varieties that are you know like. Okay, if you want them local, then we've got to do this new little dwarf cone that only takes a third of the time to grow. That's why I'm so against legalizing marijuana, because they're going to start knocking down all these hop farms to <laughs> yeah. grow weed. Make my beer not, get expensive. That's right. I don't want to double. I'd rather have my weed be twice the price and my beer be half the price. That's, folks, I don't even smoke marijuana. I just He's wanted kidding. to say. He is totally kidding. joking. Kind of. Okay, You're yeah. kind of I am absolutely, absolutely kidding. Okay. Uh, so chop and brew, chop uh, and brew. Here's your here's your chance to tell us what's coming up, what we can expect, and where we can find it, sir. Oh man, we've got the New Year's going to be some traveling. I've got a couple episodes from Pittsburgh. We're going to try to get more Look at into you. The, yeah, we're going to try to get more into the chop side. Some how to make salsas at home, how to make turkey stock at home. I just brewed like a fourteen percent uh, Sammy Claus clone, which is this Australian quad bock. Um, there's just tons back. of ideas. There's not enough not time as with lock. everything and I'm just going to shake you, my head like I know what he's talking about. Yeah, you want to do like <laughs> kimchi and pretzels and this and that and the other thing. It's, there's a lot of stuff coming. It's choppingbrew.com. We've got some merch uh, online, but we also have some merch at the Beer Dabbler store. So if you're cool. in the last minute for your chopper or your brewer in your life, the Beer Dabbler has some beanies and some awesome pint koozies. Or you can't say koozies, pint sleeves. You know yeah. what I'm going to call Apparently the koozie folks are on a uh, Oh, I think we should rampage. give him a moniker of Chip Chop. <laughs> Chip Chop. Chip Chop, right? Okay. Do people call you Chip Chop? No. No, but now his, they face will. Should, his face should be on t-shirts everywhere. Man. Chip Chop. Or Chip and Brew. No, Yikes. Chip Chop. Chip Chop. Because his okay. first name's Chip and Chop. And I got it. Uh, you, it's uh, a lays on. It's CCB. coming together. Chip yeah, Chop and chip Brew. Chip chop. Cutting chip boards. Chop. We got cutting boards. Yeah. Those okay. are online okay. only, yeah, but you, you should uh, check those out. Those are beautiful. Handmade by a Summit co-worker and a Minneapolis home brewer named Tyler. Uh, black walnut and maple. They're beautiful. All right. Well, that's all fantastic. What's the website? you that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, what's the website? Yeah, Chip. what's the website? Oh, that's great. Hopandbrew.com. Awesome. Th good I to see you again, it, man. man. Thanks for coming I'm going to bring a much better version of this beer in. <laughs> Is that right? Later. Yeah, Is that right? Yeah, well, this yeah. is disappointing us? Is that what's happening? Uh, I'm good with it. Okay. You always learn. If you don't die, you learn. Awesome. <laughs> Tom, uh, so tasting uh, three to five this Saturday. Yeah, it was super fun, actually, just jumping back to Chip Steel yeah. to do that brewing. It was our roots, Ryan and I, the, the proprietors at Elevated. Uh, started from a home brewing background. It was super fun to like get back into that for a day, uh, have that on site. We had a couple more. Uh, uh, in addition to Chip, his buddies were there brewing as well, and it was super cool. And, and that was a lot of fun. But, uh, um, w you know, it just it, we want to tie into that because we're interested in, in, in all aspects of, of the community with craft beer here in, in any form that it takes. And, and it's excited to partner with Chip and, and what they're doing there. They have a really cool uh, blog. So you, you should, should plant some out. hops on the side of your building. Yeah. That's awesome. Boom. Done. There you Boom. go. Boom. Uh, and the website is elevatedbws.com. Check us out at elevatedbws.com, uh, Facebook and Twitter, elevatedbws. We have a lot to get to and much more before nine o'clock comes because you're listening to the beer show here live on 1500 ESPN.